Welcome everyone. Uh, we'll talk about feedback uh, linearization. And as a start, we are going to introduce some uh, concepts in this piece of the lecture. So the first thing we are going to introduce actually is the basic concept of feedback linearization. And by that, we mean that we use a, a control signal to convert a nonlinear system into a, a linear uh, form. Then we'll talk about the input state linearization. And by that, I mean that if we have the system represented by its state variable equations, uh, we use the uh, control signal again, which is the input, to convert uh, that uh, equation into uh, the linear form. Finally, uh, we'll talk about the input-output linearization, which means that if we have a differential equation uh, that relates the output of the system to its input, then I will again use the input, uh, the control signal, to convert that relation into uh, the linear uh, form. And uh, for this, we need actually to study what's called the zero dynamics of the system. And this is a tool that would enable us to uh, study the local stability of uh, systems based on input-output uh, linearization control. So let's first uh, consider a basic uh, model, which is the nth derivative of x uh, equals some nonlinear function f plus g uh, times the input uh, signal uh, u nth order differential equation f and g are nonlinearities u uh, appears linearly in the uh, system uh, model uh, the vector x is composed of x x dot up to the nth minus one derivative of x now in order to linearize this equation i would take u equal to one over g of x and that would cancel the uh, nonlinearity g then i subtract the nonlinearity f and finally, I introduce, say, a state feedback control law, uh, k transpose x. In that case, k would be composed of some real numbers, k1 up to kn. So if we substitute back uh, using this control law into the uh, differential equation of the system, I would get the nth derivative of x equal to minus k1 x minus k2 x dot and so on up to kn the nth minus one derivative the nth minus one derivative of x so that would be x and minus one so as we can see uh, this is a homogeneous uh, differential equation and by the proper selection of k1 k2 up to uh, kn, I can make sure that the characteristic equation would have stable uh, roots, and even I can select them uh, to control the rate of decay of the states uh, to the origin. Now let's put that in the state space uh, uh, form. So we typically uh, choose uh, x1 to be x, x2 to be the derivative of x, and that would be uh, x1 dot. And we we'll continue uh, up till uh, xn, which would be the derivative of the n minus 1 uh, state. So in that uh, way, I can write the uh, original modeling equation, which is the nth derivative of x, as the first derivative of xn. And that would be equal to the nonlinearity f of x plus g of x times uh, u. And if I put that in the uh, vector matrix notation, I would have x1 dot here equals uh, x2, so that would be 0, 1, and then zeros. x2, that would be 0, 0, 1, because x2 uh, is a dot is actually x3, so I will have uh, two zeros and then 1 and then zeros. Uh, overall, I will have here an identity matrix of dimension n minus 1. This column will be all zeros. And the last row here would be all zeros as well. In the last equation, we have uh, the uh, xn dot equals f of x plus gx u. So I will have here 1 multiplying uh, this uh, nonlinear function. However, this doesn't appear in the other equation, so I will have zeros up here. So this is the uh, state variable equation of the uh, representing the uh, 
the nonlinear system. And again, if we uh, substitute for u by 1 over g minus f minus k transpose x, we eliminate the nonlinearities when we end up with uh, the coefficients k to appear in the last uh, row here of the uh, state uh, uh, matrix. And that, of course, will have eigenvalues depending on the characteristic equation uh, that will be uh, uh, dependent on the uh, parameters k. We will notice from that that we have uh, assumed perfect knowledge of the nonlinearities g and f. Of course, uh, in practice, this is not true. And uh, maybe we can see some example to see how uh, we can analyze the system if the cancellation is not perfect. The model uh, is assumed to be linear in u. However, this is not really uh, necessary. It could be a nonlinear function of u, like this model. The nth derivative of x depends on the nonlinear function f and nonlinear function g. And here, you have a nonlinear function alpha of u. This can be also dealt with, but provided that the inverse function alpha uh, exists, so that once we can uh, calculate, uh, say, a variable v uh, using the previous uh, analysis, we can uh, conclude from that value the value of u by using the inverse of the function. The basic idea then in our analysis would be to cancel the nonlinearities as we did here uh, when we divide by g and subtracted f. And then we impose the desired dynamics and we did that by introducing the state feedback uh, control law. So these are very simple and basic uh, steps that we can uh, use in order to uh, convert the system from its nonlinear form to a stable uh, linear uh, form. However, uh, we have some questions that we have to answer that which classes of systems can be linearized by feedback is it applicable to any uh, system remember here we actually applied the uh, procedure to a system in a specific vo form this form is called the uh, controllability the controllability form or the companion form So is it possible that we convert any nonlinear system to the controllability or companion form so we can use the same algorithm to uh, get a, a, a linearized model and then uh, guarantee stability? This is a question. The other question is that if that is possible, how we do it? How, what is the transformation that would we, we can use in order to convert a given system from its original uh, model into the uh, required companion form and consequently design a controller and maybe get back to the original um, uh, state uh, space in order to uh, find the control law to be implemented. To answer the first question whether a certain system can be uh, put in uh, a linear form or not, this requires uh, a background on differential uh, geometry. We'll do that, but at the end of our series of lectures on uh, feedback linearization. However, we will see uh, in this piece of the lecture uh, a brief introduction to uh, do the transformation, uh, what we call the input state uh, linearization and output state uh, linearization. In a coming piece of the lecture, we'll see formally how this can be done also. But uh, for now, let's see an introduction. So uh, I'm going to consider the input state linearization. And by that, as we mentioned at the beginning, it means that if we uh, have a system in the state variable uh, form, uh, the uh, problem or the objective is to design the input signal, the control signal, so that the resulting uh, system would be uh, linear. Now, suppose that I'm given uh, a system which, is, which consists of two first-order uh, differential equations, as we can see here. We will notice that it's not possible uh, to use u in the current form uh, so that we linearize the system as a whole. u appears in the second equation. It can be used to linearize the second equation, but it has no effect on the linearization of the first uh, equation. So, what we are going to do now is to use a transformation 
in order to put the system first in a form that can be uh, linearized as a whole using the uh, control signal. Of course, the transformation is not unique. This is very similar to the transformation in uh, linear systems where we could have different uh, transformations to obtain uh, another form of the same system. Here again, the uh, linearization uh, or the transformation is not uh, unique. We are going to consider one uh, transformation which is given here uh, as Z1 and Z2. Uh, it is, of course, a nonlinear uh, transformation. How do we get that transformation? We will not do that right now, uh, but we will assume that somehow we, will, we are able to uh, have the transformation and we will see how to implement uh, that uh, transformation so that we can get a linearized uh, state space representation of uh, the system. So in order to do that, I will just take the derivative z1 dot as x1 dot. And this is from the original system it is minus 2x1 plus ax2 plus sine x1. However, we know that x1 is z1 from the definition of the transformation and ax2 plus sine x1 is z2. So we can write then that z1 dot equals minus 2 z1 plus z2. So this is the first state variable equation in the new coordinates. I'm going to calculate also z2 dot and that would be a x2 dot plus x1 dot times cosine x1. Then I will substitute for x2 dot. So it is a times minus x2 cosine x1 plus u cosine 2x1. and then plus cosine x1 times x1 uh, dot and that's minus 2x1 plus a x2 plus sine x1 and that can be put in the form a u cosine 2 z1 plus cosine z1 times minus 2 z1 plus sine z1. Now, notice that the first equation here is already linear in Z1 and Z2. And I can linearize the second equation here. This is the equation for Z2 dot by using U equal 1 over A cosine 2Z1. times 2 z1 cosine z1. So this term will cancel the first term here. Minus sine z1 cosine z1. And that will cancel the second term here. And then I will add the new dynamics through the signal V. If I do that, I will get Z2 dot equals V, which means that I can write the state variable equations Z1 dot and Z2 dot as I have z1 dot equals minus 2z1 plus z2. So here I'll have minus 2 
plus 1 this multiplies z1 and z2 here we'll have 0 0 0 1 and this multiplies v this is from the second equation now I can select uh, any combination of the state variables so that this matrix the state matrix would be uh, stable for example if I take v equals minus 2z2 that would lead to z1 dot and z2 dot equals minus 2 1 0 and minus 2 times z1 and z2 so obviously this selection of the uh, control signal v will guarantee that the resulting closed loop system will be uh, stable and so we are able to linearize the system using u and to select the closed loop poles to be in the stable region through through the design of v so we have achieved using what's called state input uh, linearization technique we have achieved stability uh, of the system we can write now the control law as one over of course i'm going to write it in terms of the original uh, uh, coordinate system uh, that's x1 and x2 cosine 2x1 and that multiplies 2x1 cosine x1 minus sine x1 cosine x1 minus 2 a x2 plus sine x1 so I just have substituted here by the transformation uh, for z1 and z2 so that I can get the control uh, signal in terms of the uh, x1 and x2 uh, coordinates so that's how we do the uh, uh, input state uh, linearization for a given uh, nonlinear system which is not necessarily in the uh, companion or in the uh, normal uh, form. Next uh, I'd like to introduce the concept of input output linearization and by that I mean that uh, we use the input output differential equation which is could be a nonlinear equation uh, and we'll uh, select the control signal so that we linearize the input output uh, differential equation so in this example I'm considering a third order uh, system it consists of three first order uh, differential equations for the state variables x1, x2 and x3 uh, I will select uh, the output to be x1 now uh, since the control signal doesn't show in the uh, equation of the output we differentiate the output once so we get y dot equals x1 dot and that's equal from the first differential equation sine x2 plus x2 plus 1 times x3 but once again uh, the control signal doesn't show in the input output differential equation here so we have to differentiate once again so get y double dot and that will give x2 dot cosine x2 plus x2 plus 1 times x3 dot plus x2 dot times x3 now we can substitute for x2 dot and x3 uh, dot from the original uh, equations to get the uh, differential equation for y double dot and if we do that we will get uh, x2 plus 1 times u and that would be equal to x1 to the power 5 plus x3 that multiplies x3 plus cosine x2 plus x2 plus 1 
times x1 squared. So let me select these terms together and I call them f of x. Now I have a differential equation that relates the second derivative of the output to the input. Uh, it is non-linear equation because of f of x. I'm going to select u so that I cancel the non-linearity and then introduce linear uh, differential equation that would uh, satisfy uh, my requirements. Now let's uh, assume that we would like y to track a certain smooth uh, signal yd and the word smooth is used in the uh, nonlinear uh, control literature to mean that it is a signal that can be uh, differentiated for any degree that you require and of course it is continuous so if we assume that we can take um, u equal to 1 over x2 plus 1 so I cancel this term and then I subtract the nonlinear function f of x and I'll introduce a new signal v. The new signal v can be selected as y the desired second derivative of the desired uh, trajectory minus k1 times e minus k2 times e dot where I define E as the difference between Y and the desired output. So if we do that, we get the differential equation of the output as Y double dot equals Y D double dot minus K1 E minus K2 E dot and that will lead to the differential equation e double dot plus k2 e dot plus k1 e equal to zero obviously this is a homogeneous differential equation if we select k1 as a real positive number and k2 as a real positive real number we will guarantee that this equation will uh, decay to zero, the error will decay to, uh, to zero exponentially and that means that the output will uh, follow really the desired uh, trajectory. So this is the uh, design of uh, a system based on what's called uh, input-output uh, linearization. However, we have some notes that we have to uh, recall here. The first is that the control law requires full state feedback. I need to measure x1, x2, and x3 in order to implement uh, the control law. You can see here that the function f requires x1, x2, and x3 uh, in its implementation. So it is a full state feedback controller. Also, we needed to differentiate the output twice to get uh, an equation that relates the output to the, to the input. So. Uh, we call the number of times we differentiate the output in order to get the input-output differential equation. We call that the relative uh, degree. So in our example, the relative degree is equal to 2. The difference between the order of the system, uh, which is 3 in our example, and the relative degree, which is 2 in our example, that difference is 1. That would represent the order of the internal dynamics. And the internal dynamics is part of the system, but it does not appear, it doesn't show in the input-output uh, differential equation of, uh, of the system. What does that mean? It means that when we stabilize the output using the control signal uh, U, we don't know about the uh, performance or the characteristic of the uh, unobservable mode which, uh, represent, which is represented by the internal uh, dynamics. So in order to ensure that the whole system would perform as required, we have at least to make sure that the system is uh, stable, which means that the internal dynamics have to be stable. The internal dynamics in this example uh, could be taken as uh, this first order uh, differential equation. Uh, 
However, it is really difficult in general to uh, analyze the internal dynamics. They are uh, typically uh, non-linear uh, differential equations. They are non-autonomous and they are coupled with external dynamics, which are the uh, dynamics of the input-output equation. So it's really difficult to, um, to analyze them. That's why the concept of zero dynamics is introduced because it will help us uh, to uh, analyze the system in uh, the presence of uh, some internal dynamics. However, the conclusions that we are going to uh, derive based on the uh, zero dynamics will really uh, guarantee some local properties of stability. It does not guarantee actually the uh, global uh, stability of, uh, of the system. We'll see uh, that in detail uh, later. To understand more the concept of uh, internal dynamics and relative degree, let's consider this example of a uh, linear system. It is a third order system as we can see. It has uh, one zero. So we can put it in the controllable uh, form as uh, shown here. Now suppose that we would like to uh, find the relation y. It is uh, b1 x1 plus b node x2. So the first derivative of y would be uh, b1 x1 dot plus b node x2 dot and this is from the uh, controllable canonical form x1 dot is x2 so it is b1 x2 plus b node x3 x2 dot now since the control signal doesn't show in uh, the equation for y dot then we have to take a second derivative so that would give us b1 x2 dot plus b node x3 dot and this is again can be written as b1 x3 plus b node e. Now this is an input output uh, differential equation that includes the second derivative of y and the input. So we can see here that we have differentiated twice in order to get u in the input output differential equation which means that the relative degree is equal to. And we know actually in linear systems the relative degree is the difference between the degree of the denominator which is 3 here and the degree of the numerator which is 1. So the difference is 2 and this is consistent with what we have uh, shown here. Now to stabilize the system we can use the same technique that we used before. So we take u as 1 over b node then we cancel the term b1 x3 and when then we add the uh, dynamics that we like suppose that we are doing a stabilization problem so i'm uh, taking here k1 y dot minus k2 times y so that will lead to the uh, differential equation y double dot plus k1 y dot plus k2 y equals zero and again this is a homogeneous differential equation if we take k1 and k2 to be um, a positive real number then we guarantee that the uh, system will correspond to an exponentially decaying uh, system so it is uh, stable so that is very similar to what we did uh, before however let us look at the internal uh, dynamics if we take uh, the state uh, x1 to be our uh, to represent the internal dynamics so x1 dot would be equal to x2 and we know that y is equal to b1 x1 plus b node x2 so we can write then an equation for x1 dot as 1 over b node y minus b1 x1. So that means that we can write the internal, the transfer function for the internal dynamics as x1 over y, and that would be equal to 1 
over b node divided by s plus b1 over b node. So the internal dynamics now is governed actually by the poles which are actually equivalent to the uh, zero of the system. So in order for the internal dynamics of the system to be stable, we have a condition here that the system has to be minimum phase. Nextly, uh, let me consider the concept of uh, zero dynamics. First, the definition. Actually, uh, the zero dynamics is defined as the internal dynamics of the, uh, of the system if the output is kept at zero by a specific uh, and actually unique choice of the input uh, signal. So let's see, uh, for example, in our previous example, uh, how we can uh, do that. If we take the equation for the internal dynamics, which is the equation of x1 dot, if we put here y equal to zero, so we get x1 dot equals minus b1 over uh, b node x1. And obviously here the system would be stable if minus b1 over uh, b node would be uh, in the uh, stable region uh, or if it is negative in general. So this is the zero dynamics in the uh, linear system. Now let's consider a nonlinear system and show how to uh, find the zero dynamics as well. Now I'm going to assume that... Uh, the output y is equal to x1. So in that case, y dot is equal to x1 dot, and that's x2 cubed plus u. So if we put the output and its derivative equal to 0, That would require u to be minus x2 cubed. So this is this unique choice of u that would force the output and its derivative to be at zero. Now, the internal dynamics of the system would be given by the equation x2 dot, and that will be uh, minus x2 cubed. Now, if we consider a Lyapunov function v, equals say one half x two squared then v dot would be equal to x two times x two dot that means that v dot is equal to minus x two to the power four which is negative definite. So that will lead us to the conclusion that the zero dynamics will be exponentially stable and we can conclude that locally the system under uh, output uh, feedback control it will be uh, it will be uh, locally uh, stable uh, as well so this actually uh, ends my uh, introduction to the basic concepts uh, regarding uh, feedback linearization and we'll talk about that more formally and in detail uh, in the coming lectures thank you